He looks so much bigger than me. That's because look at you can see my f***ing long legs. <laughs> That's why. I'm all leg. Look at these things. I'm f***ing all Whoa. leg. Yeah. My god, we might get done for like some sort of sexual content if you do that again. I, I look weird. <laughs> There's a reason I don't show my legs in my videos. Cause I, I, think we like should, I think we should keep your legs in it. Very muggy. <laughs> I'm not even wearing a hat. It's too muggy. I thought I'd still go with a woolen cheese cutter. <laughs> yeah, nice work, Tom. I do have hair. You do have hair. I haven't quite gone full grey yet. So I've got a little bit left. Got a little bit left. A little yeah, bit left. Yeah. Still Hang, there. Hanging on. Hanging on with a, by a thread. Mm. Anyway, uh, look, we're the first episode of the year. 2023. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah, shame on you. It's February. Yeah. Straight it's disgraceful. The, you, I disgraceful. Thought, I thought you were better than that. Sorry. This is the first time we've seen each other, so technically are you allowed to say Happy New Year and the New Year? Probably not. Yeah, I, I, you, I thought you were better than that. Mike. I know. Disgraceful. Mm. Maybe your legs look a little bit... We're still on the legs. The camera's a little bit closer to you than it is to me. That's what it is, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Oh, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the height difference. Well, you are a f***ing gargantuan. You're, you're the f***ing missing link, for God's sake. <laughs> oh. well, that's classy. There we go. There we go. Look, your legs look so small now. There we go. Look how big mine are. Look, look at those. Yep. All right. Um, well, what a time to be in Auckland, eh? It's been wet. She's been moist. Yes. She's been very, very moist. It's been um, a lot of rain. The town that Mark and I live in has had a, for the second time in a year, a once in 100 year storm. A uh, summer's worth of rain mm, in a now. day. It wasn't like a four hour period. We Something got a like month's that. worth. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah it, it was, was wet. It was crazy wet. I was in a, 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 an island just off Auckland called Waiheke Island and it was pretty wet over there too. Yeah, it was wet. Yeah, it was. And everyone's, well, it, was, it was pretty intense. Like schools getting washed out. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, I went behind, you know, somebody lost a home, I know somebody lost a home. Yeah, yeah, genuinely Business pretty lost. bloody awful, like, uh, yeah, destruction of property and just, I mean, there's been even been a few deaths, so it's been, I'm just, it's not, I think we, we don't get this in Auckland. I, and I'm struggling because I need to turn everything into something funny, but you brought a death into it, so you really, yeah. you know, I was just about to say something about the fact that it's been such a shit start to the year for Auckland, the Blues have to win. It's the only thing they can do for us right now. They they must win the, this year. Well, I see Dalton was in the news saying that, you know, he's, he's got the old negative feelings about that final saying they blew it. Oh. So maybe it's the chance for redemption. I didn't think they blew it. I think they the just... The Crusaders were just bloody good. They just got out, outplayed yeah. by a better team. Yeah. It happens. They, they, yeah, they looked like definitely the worst team that day. Indeed. It was very disappointing. Mm. But we're not here to talk about Super Rugby. We could talk a little bit about Super Rugby. But... I'm going to be honest with you, Mark. During the oh. break, you've been watching rugby every day. <laughs> I you am... haven't been at the beach enjoying the there's summer and the well, off season. There's not, there's not a lot of that to enjoy. Um, but I am the quintessential sort of New Zealand rugby supporter that I just switch off. What's well, summer? November, I'm like, I'm not watching rugby. I don't watch any irk or like premiership yeah. rugby or anything like that. It's cricket season. It's cricket season. and you know, Beach and fun barbecues. Times, and... Christmas. Yeah, exactly. All that stuff. It's so about I, rugby season. I, I don't watch any of it, but I did catch, I did catch a bit of the sevens, oh, and yes. I also caught one of your live streams, and you helped me out of a sticky spot that I want to talk to you about. Oh, okay, go on. And so I, I was at the family batch. It was like the twenty seventh. Why you was like the twenty seventh of December? Okay. I was at the family batch in Waihe. Right. And I, I've got to be honest. I do something. I'm sure you all do it. I was taking a shit while on my phone. <laughs> We've talked about this before. Yeah, and you came up. I was like, F you. he was doing a live stream, and I was like, let's have a look at that. And I went in there to look at your live stream. I can't read this. There's some game in Europe going It would have been a game. And then I went, yo, what's up? How you going? Merry Christmas or something. I'm there, and uh, you're like, oh, Merry Christmas. And then I took a pretty hefty, sizable fella. Right. And um, You still remember that part in detail, huh? I do. Nice. And then I, I went, I, it's a fair, a lot of people in the batch at the time. Yeah. But, you know, it would have been okay, it's family, but I went to flush. The old guy wouldn't go down. <laughs> he wouldn't go down. He, like... Oh, Bill, I remember this. Bill I Cosby would not retreat. I saved you. Yeah, with yeah. With my exactly. life advice. Exactly. It's not just about so the rugby. I, I put it on the chat. I was like, oh, serious situation, guys. I've got a crap that just will not sink. Can you help me out? And then you're like, oh, tricky spot, Tones. Uh, have you tried putting toilet paper on it? 
I was like, oh, genius. Put a bit of toilet paper on it. Press the old flush button and away we went. Yeah, These yeah. glasses aren't just for show, mate. No, you're a smart man. Smart man. Man. And then you've also been on probably a, a much more highfalutin podcast since. Oh yeah, year. I had a chat with old uh, old Squidgy and his brother, oh. which was a bit of fun. What's his brother's name? His brother's name, as you put me on the spot, his name is Robbie, and his brother's name something Welsh. I know it's Owens. Owen. Robbie and Owen. No, their, their, their surname is Owen. Oh, jeez, I talked to this guy. You should. Uh, we, if either of us should know the answer to this question, it's me. I think I follow him on Twitter. I follow him on Twitter as well. Will. Oh, God. Will Owen. Sorry, Will. You're not watching, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's an uh, avid fan, Will Owen. Yeah. That's a Welsh name. Yeah, very Welsh. Yeah. Well, really good blokes, huh? We had a good chat. We watched uh, one of the old Rugby I, World I, Cup I games. I listened to it. I was really offended by one <laughs> part that you guys all laughed at how absurd it was that people were hyping up Brendan Leonard. Brendan Leonard was the player that year. He had, like, an incredible super run. <laughs> You're like, who is this guy? Do you not remember the hype around him? No. He was, like, the guy that The commentators year. were certainly talking him up. He was so good in super rugby that okay. year. Yeah, I liked him. But he didn't quite perform right. that great. Some that guys year. have that one year where it's mm. like... I remember, was it Ben Lamb one year for the Canes? They were just like... This guy needs to be an all-black. He's yeah. phenomenal. And the all-black selectors are kind of like, well, we need more than one flash in the pan for you to get selected for the all-blacks. And it can like be it. magical. Like, probably the, one of the best one-year... Uh, right. There's ever. been a few guys who've done Nicky that. Nicky Mamaskata. That's right. You know, had the dream year in 2015. Scored a try in a World Cup final. Like, out of obscurity that year. And yeah, then straight right. back yeah. into obscurity He's afterwards. like the definition of a bolter, isn't he? Yeah, but he did a job. He did a job. Yeah. 100%. So there has been rugby going on. There and there's rugby. a certain big old tournament happening in the Northern Hemisphere. Correct it's me if I'm wrong. Six Nations starts Six this nine. weekend. International right. rugby is back after a couple of months off. Right. Is, is there anything else? Should we jump straight into that? or Because I know there's been a bit else going on over the break as well. So I'm definitely playing the, the part. Not even playing the part. I am the dumb guy today who knows nothing about what's happening, what's going on. But one thing I do know is... Oh, I'm loving the spiciness, spiciness of this now. Very spicy little meatball. Eddie Jones going to Australia. Very sorry for Dave Rennie, mm. the coach of the world's best crap team. Um, <laughs> the Wallabies of 2022. I yep. think he could have done some interesting things with that, that squad. Mm. But it is... There's something so such a morsel in there that's so tasty. The yeah. idea of the Aussies knocking yeah. out England with Eddie Jones at the helm, him just in there. Ha, 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 ha. He like, deflect, like, did you watch his press conference? No, I don't he watch it. deflected any and all questions about England. He was just like, I don't want to talk about it. It's like right. it's done and dusted. He's very much focused we do on role Australia. Play? No, f do you your role play. Play. Let's Let's do a role play. Why is it with your role play? Do role play? Like this is your business. Stop switching. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> But, well, this is going on your channel. This is going on your This is going on your channel. Oh, okay. So you be, you be Eddie, and I'll be one of the people in the press. Okay, so Eddie, 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 Eddie. So uh, there must be a pretty enticing uh, thing on the horizon to be playing England at a World Cup knockout game. Would it be like, would it be good to get one over the old team and shove it up their asses, so to speak? Yeah, I'm just focused on, uh, on the next game <laughs> and uh, not looking at anything in the past. <laughs> okay. Yep, pretty much that. That was good. That's it. That was a great role play. That role play was brought to you by... I love role plays. Well, maybe we could, like... I keep in the 2CGD. If those of you saw the last episode, it was a... Uh, it was an awards evening. It was a very... It was a high for a Prestigious. Affair. But maybe we'll have greatest role play of the year, potentially. So I'll put that back there. You happy for that to be a... <laughs> I love role plays. <laughs> love it. I love a role play. Anyway, so how are you feeling about, you know... Eddie is going to... I think he's definitely going to make everything, like you say, very spicy. Like, yeah. there's no press conference quite like an Eddie Jones press conference. Yeah. You know he's going to throw some bars out there. He's going to stir the pot a little bit. I think part of it, he likes to distract some stuff from his players. Good for um, the interest he, he in rugby in Australia. He gets sick of being asked boring questions from journalists, like dumb questions. Yeah, right. And like you just said... The Aussie rugby or rugby sports space is already so crowded with AFL and rugby league, and then I guess cricket, like maybe different seasons. But 
He like rugby needs something rugby's, to just going to grab headlines, and Eddie Jones is a headline guy. And rugby, the Aussies love a winner, but rugby is at the bottom of the picking order at the yeah. moment, right at the bottom, sadly. Like Dave Rennie in press conferences, I mean, he can get a little bit tetchy, but mm. he's he's still business. You I know. felt sorry for him out of the three coaches that went on, Wayne Pivac himself, and funnily enough, Eddie Jones. Yeah. I felt like well, Eddie Jones getting released from England, I still think was a crazy decision to be mm. honest. But I felt like there was. They weren't going to get rid of him unless Eddie Jones was available. Right. And still, for my money, the best coach in the world is not coaching an international team. I would raise it. Mm. That's just... There's been a little bit of news about the potential Ooh. all-black selection process. That's right. It's, down, it's a two-horse race. They seem to think it's going to be a two-horse race. Like last time when they appointed old... Uh, for, was it Fozzie? Was it, yeah, Fozzie. Yeah, they, they, just, like, they sent out a bunch of... They got 19 applications. 19 applications. They asked for expressions of interest kind of thing. And I can't believe they turned me down. Sad but true. Maybe I'll put you as my assistant next time. Okay, that'll, yeah. that'll add some weight. <laughs> yeah. They'll be like, whoa, geez. The powerhouse of New Zealand exactly. YouTube, rugby exactly. YouTubers. We're going to bring the subs. You bring one, you make one video a day, I make one video every three months. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but they reckon it's going to be more targeted this time, so yeah. I think no. that makes sense. I think they can find a new way to turn down Razor. And make, <laughs> and make him a I will be... What has he done to the guys at the NZA? Why don't they like him? He's a bit out there. Right. He's, he's a character. He's an out there kind of character and he come, he's kind of a little bit sort of ethereal in the way he talks and like how he kind of like just, he's kind of got that kind of surfer vibe. He's, he's not the old boys club vibe, right? No, he's not the old boys club, but he doesn't, probably doesn't say the right things. Probably right. makes people feel a bit weird and awkward doesn't at times. Get, doesn't play the toe the line kind of thing. No, but he's uniquely himself and right. he is a proven, proven winner. Yeah. Like Good man manager, right? Incredible man manager. But and just... It doesn't. I was. I watched that Barbarian series, that oh, yeah. doco, and yeah, it comes out some weird stuff. Yeah, yeah, pretty left field. But they, I think it's one of those things that when somebody comes at you with weird stuff, it your mind goes, "What the?" F-? Yeah, exactly. But it, actually, you're engaged. Yeah, true. Rather than just hearing yeah, the same stuff over. Rather than the stigma is like, we've got to start this game really well. Like the first ten minutes up front, we need to be able yeah, to dominate. Yeah. We need, and then those guys have been in freaking thousand freaking you know thousands of games are yeah. like yep oh well, i was planning on starting crap so. yeah yeah you know, i thank thank goodness look, you told me otherwise yeah, i was just gonna cruise look at look at the guy next to you think about where you're from think about where he's from yeah like you're doing it for your family oh, good how's your mom yeah. like, <laughs> so i think he comes up with like a just a way that's probably very engaging true. odd but engaging true you know maybe we change the title of the podcast to odd but engaging you know maybe we are odd Oh. But engaging. There you go. Yeah, exactly. There you go. All right. So you, uh, Australia plays England in a World Cup quarterfinal. Who's your money on right now? We haven't seen. No, I'm not what saying old uh, Steve uh, Borthwick could do. So you got to back Eddie, right? With inside oh, knowledge. Yeah. But just you looking at the, are you just looking at players then, or you, who's got the better I'm, cattle? I mean, they both got good. They both got good players. Yeah, and especially if, if they. <clears throat> I feel so sorry for Rennie. He didn't even get like a run at the the you know at, at a full strength squad. That's right. His you squad know? was just he hit was by injuries all the rattled time. Rattled by COVID the whole time, yeah. or like had just horrific industry, yeah. uh, injuries, yeah. and did pretty bloody well for the most part. Yeah, some of the games they lost, like narrowly to France away, narrowly to yeah. Ireland away. I mean. They're not a bad side. France had to play out of their skin. That try they got at yeah, the very yeah. end of the game exactly. was just a freak. Yeah. Freaky try. I feel like if one of those results goes Dave's way, maybe he's able to keep his job. But then Eddie just being on the market just blew the whole thing wide open. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think the fact that they wanted to get an Aussie back in charge was also a factor as well. That's just, just something different. Probably. Same with Borthwick with, uh, with England. They just does, wanted to have a local coach back in charge. It's just Where does Rennie go now? I think the, all the rumours are Japan, but he's denied it. Supposedly, he was lined up. They, uh, one of the Japanese clubs, was going to take him on after the World Cup anyway. So maybe he just chills for a year and then goes off to Japan. But like I said, he, sabbatical. he denied it that it was even linked with them. But mm. I don't know. It tends but to be. Just want to talk about it. Though. Yeah, I mean, it's not a good look to be talking about We're your next be upset. job while still on the job. You know, I've never been. I've, I've never been fired. Believe it or not, I know. No, it's hard to believe. I'm amazed. But imagine like being fired publicly. Like, not even, like... I guess he gets to cash that check for the rest of the year, so... Ching, ching. Mm. Yeah. He can just sit on the beach and watch the floodwaters recede. If he's based <laughs> in Auckland, I don't know where he lives. Well, he was a coach of the Chiefs, so... Probably in the Waikato, you reckon? And they're getting a bit of flooding <clears throat> now, I think, as well. Yeah, it's heading down south. Yeah. Anyway, uh, 
Weather Watch will come back next week. We'll talk about Weather Watch. But I'm very excited. I've never watched a Six Nations before. I, well, I've watched You've watched bits. games, right? I've watched, I don't think I've really sat down and said, I'm going to watch this whole game. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Obviously, I've watched a lot of rugby. Yeah. Sheer loads of rugby. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just not a tournament that's on at a time of year where I'm thinking about yeah, rugby, yeah, yeah, really. Sure. Or I'm thinking about waking up at four in the morning. I think morning. I've said it before. Prior to the channel, I would sometimes, in the morning, get up and like, oh, f this yeah, rugby, rugby on. on. And yeah. I will just watch it. And like, yeah. oh, you know, this is Scotland beating. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. But I would never be like, I'm getting up at four o'clock to watch this game. Because yeah. I think, I think maybe a couple of like super crucial games like to decide who's actually going to win the whole thing. Yeah. Like, I've, I've like on, I actually want to But to actually that. watch every game of the competition, I don't know, just, you just get more engaged with it. You can't avoid it. Like I got, I got roped into the Six Nations a few years ago and they kind of got me hooked on sinker. The, so. the word that they use a lot of, uh, 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 that I've seen in like some of the prefab or whatever you want to talk about, the hype about it is yeah. they keep saying it's special. Is it special? What's special about it? I think it's the history, the fact they get Cracking attendances every game. Uh -huh. The only games you can genuinely get tickets to in the Six Nations, by my understanding, is the Italian home games or when the Italians are away. Oh, like, right. it tends to be, like, if you want to get a ticket, you have to go through your local rugby club. Like, you need to be a member oh, really? of the local rugby club to even get part of the allocation. Like, it's really hard to get tickets because it's right. just that intense. So, the fact that it's also localized, you get so many away fans as well. Yeah, right. Like, it's not like, I mean, can you imagine going to South Africa for an away game in the rugby championship just no. like on a whim, like just well, for a weekend? I, yeah, no, I can't. But I rem actually, I lived <clears> in the UK in 2002. Yeah. And I remember um, Ireland playing Wales. Right. Uh, a, a, during while I was in the country and it was like a massive deal like all yeah. the Irish came across yeah, and exactly. like it was like this and there was a certain hype about it and it was actually more press coverage than I expected it to be yeah. and it was it was, it was a, it's it was a big, a big deal old, big and it's free deal. to air over there which I think adds a massive on BBC or ITV? BBC and ITV they, they yeah. split it so even people who aren't rugby fans who are usually watching football or just not engaged in sports they like sports on like oh rugby's on Six Nations on I'll watch that like they yeah, won't watch yeah. the premiership or they won't watch the URC but what's the pay service over there? There's a few. They've Sky, got their Sky, version they've got of Sky, Sky. I think Premier Sports. They don't have a Fox or anything though. No, but they've got a few. I think if you wanted to watch every league over there, you would need to subscribe to like BT, three, three different. Yeah, BT Sports is another BT one. Sports. There's like three of them. It's they a real the, pain they have the UFC. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of pay subscription services. So the fact that it's free to air, the history of it. The fact that they're so geographically linked and there's history between the countries, like everyone hates England. Yeah. So yeah, it's just. It is a bit special. They keep calling it rugby's greatest championship, which I'm always is like, it okay. I'd like to see um, like uh, the best of the Tri Nations versus the best the best of the Six Nations. Six Nations. That would be a great Tri Nations rugby championship. Sorry, yeah, exactly. yeah. Sorry Argentina. Yeah. Um, that'd be a great little. But that's yeah. never going to happen. I feel like generally, when I've looked at the numbers, the Six Nations games are usually closer, yeah. but the rugby championship games are we usually more high scoring. So. In terms of just world, in terms of World Cup wins, they've got one win um, over how many tournaments? Eight wins. Uh, how many tournaments have we had since nineteen eighty seven? I don't know. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. We've won three. We've won the three. South Africans won three. three. The Aussies have won two. two. So that's eight, and then there's one to England. Yeah. There you go. Rugby's greatest championship. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Look, I'm onto my second beer. Look, I want to ask you some questions. You okay. Are you ready for this? Okay. Okay, so... Six Nations related? Yeah, Six Nations... Okay. I've, got this, I've got this rash, right? <laughs> um, so, I don't really know what's going on. I, don't, I haven't yep. followed the squads or anything like yep. that. But I, I, tell me if I'm wrong. This is the, basically the, the favourites from, from least favourites to favourite favourites. Mm -hmm. So we've got Italy. Always... The favourite for the wooden spoon. Currently, Italy, is it <clears throat> Wales or is it Scotland? It's Wales. And then Scotland. I think actually this year the bookies have got Wales and Scotland pretty much dead even. And then, on, well, the bookies are a little bit different, but yeah. And then England, Ireland, France? New Zealand bookies have got England in the middle and then Ireland, France pretty much equal. Some bookies, I think, in the Northern Hemisphere got Ireland slightly edging uh, France because Ireland have got France at home this year. Who are playing Italy this weekend? French. So There's this weird thing with the Six Nations where it just flips it on. flips on its head every year. So you get the same teams in the same order every year, but they just flip the schedule. Okay, let's start with Italy. Yeah, Italy are playing France at home this weekend. 
I think Italy came on leaps and bounds last mm-hmm. year. I really like Kieran Crowley. He was one of yeah. my favourite players growing up. Taranaki lad. <laughs> I, I really like He was quick. Okay. And he, he's always looked old. <laughs> Even in 1987, he looked old. Right. Like, if you get that sort of grey top, <laughs> but, hey, that naki boy could run. <laughs> Um, and even though he had, a, he had a, I don't know how he had such a shite time with Canada, but then got a more prestigious team. So right. How did that happen? Because they were. He was coaching Benetton for a long time, so he's uh, been involved with Italian rugby for a while, and I think he's benef- benefited from the fact. Benefited from Benetton. From the fact that the previous, the second previous coach, second which was pre- Connor O'Shea, so it was before him it was Franco Smith. Yes. And before Franco Smith, I think it was Connor O'Shea. And Conor O'Shea's thing was... Conor O'Smith and Conor O'Shea. We are going to invest... The, no, Franco Smith and then Conor O'Shea. Okay. So Conor O'Shea was like, we are going to invest the shit out of the youth game. Because there's some young boys coming through that are pretty and good. And genuinely, you look at the Italian under-20 side, and they regularly compete and beat some of the other Six Nation sides. Mm. Like, their under-20 side has been leaps and bounds ahead. Not that I follow under-20s that much. But I know their under-20 side has been leaps and bounds ahead of the, the senior that's, team. That's good to hear. But some of these guys are now filtering through into What's the, the senior team. What's the name of that winger? Compo- com- 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 the fullback cup. What's all? Yeah, yeah. I've seen bits of him and he yeah. looks very, very tasty. He's good. Yeah, He's good yeah, player. yeah, yeah, yeah. And what were the keys to their improvement last year? I think, like I said, they, they put a bunch of their under-20s guys promoted them to the senior side and they've got now genuinely a bunch of x-factor guys they've got cup awards so they had monty yuani who was yeah. great but he's now with the melbourne rebels so he's unavailable oh, unfortunately yeah, right. but they got some good props yeah and they're just playing they for me they were uh, like in years gone by just what i always call them they were relatively competitive for 50 or 60 minutes and then they would fall apart there seemed to be some sort of like mental shift last yeah. year with they like, they're actually they've held on for eight. they've definitely turned that corner a wee bit where they're able to be competitive for longer like I think last year they still had a little bit of it like I think they were one of the few teams who led France yeah. in the Six Nations last year whereas every other game I think France pretty much went out and what does success look like for them is it is it winning one game two games or is it not coming last last year they won one and that was a breaking a massive streak. That was a massive losing streak they broke, yeah. So, I mean, there's still odds on for the wooden spoon. I still think it might be a couple more years before more of the young talent. These mm. guys who are now 21 and 22, when they're 24 and 25. When they've got a bit more of a... Once they finish growing, basically. But, yeah, um, right. yeah, I mean, if they could get two wins, I think that would be phenomenal. If they mm. can get one win, I think that would still be pretty decent if they don't win any games they'll probably be a bit disappointed because i think they do have wales at home this year they beat them away mm. last year so they got wales at home which will be the game they'll be targeting but obviously part of that's going to be dependent on what the gatlin factor is like with wales i am not uh, i i, I you're very... warren gatlin's biggest fan <laughs> i'm not a fan of him at all like i f- feel like whenever yeah, i watch the Ah, damn. The old telekinesis is not working. I'm going to use my daughter's hairbrush. There we go. See if we can do this. The old... There we oh, go. Well On camera as well. No pressure. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, what was I saying before I was incredibly Warren awesome was opening a thing with it? Well, like, obviously he did some incredible things for Wales over the past over 100 years. You know, they've already here. picked their first team. Oh, have they? For the match against Ireland this weekend. I saw a stat by Russ Petty, who's this great stats guy on Twitter. Yeah. He said that I think eight of the starting 15 played for Wales in 2012. Oh my God. Alan so, Jones. <laughs> Alan Jones was playing for them in 1982. <laughs> so uh, to put it that, you know, Gatland is relying on a bit of experience. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not like it's a bad stat, but it's just a stat that he's not going to, you know. So all his, 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 all his guys are in their... Oh, there's, there's, a to, of, there's a lot of early to late thirty year olds. Yeah, there's a lot of thirty year olds. I mean, it's not to say. Is Alan and Jones still? Is he our age? What is he's he? younger. He's like thirty seven. We're the same age. It's hard to. T- I know he looks a lot older. I know. But it's because you've got those legs. legs, those massive limbs that just didn't stop growing. Mm. I don't like this because I do look like a small boy. Look here. Uh, I don't know why you put my legs in the frame. <laughs> You guys, below. If you guys are listening on Spotify, God. you can't see my legs, but my legs Go are check long. out the YouTube video and look at... Um, 
<laughs> like, my like, legs. He's very insecure about it, but then I'm also feeling insecure about. I'm not small. <laughs> <laughs> Flex. Um, okay, yeah. So it's gonna be Warren Ball. It's just gonna be Crash Balls in the he's middle. He's picked this guy like, Joe Hawkins at twelve. Yeah. And I think he's only played one test, or at least he's only started one test. And he's very much a playmaking 12. Oh. So maybe he's going to go mo- for something a little bit different. He's picked George North at 13, looking who's for a, a big freaking unit. Is he looking for a Walter Little type player? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he's going for something a little bit Walter Little was one of my faves growing up. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's North Harbour boy. Okay, of course. Great combination with Frank Barnes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Midfield Connection. They wrote a book together. Um, it's called Midfield yeah. Connection. <laughs> When I say they wrote it, somebody else wrote it, yes. and they just they put their names on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's Whale. Oh no, because we're talking about Italy. Italy, Italy okay. young squad, low expectations, but certainly higher expectations than last year. Wales, I'd say, I'd say, kind of in turmoil still. Like in terms of not only coming in with a new t- new coach, losing their old coach, lacking continuity. I know he's an old hand in terms mm. of understanding the players but it's things have moved on even tactically right. in that time and he is not coming in with form he coming in with like a very very poor record to being promoted out of being a, a super re- rugby coach. Yeah, coach yeah that's right the Chiefs I'm let not... him go like mm-hmm. when Wales came knocking on Warren Gatlin's well, okay, door yeah, we'll pack your bags. The, the Chiefs weren't like you need to pay us a fee to get his yeah, services exactly. the Chiefs just released him out of his contract yeah because when he coached fully for the year they lost every single game of the year he did start the pre-COVID season okay. Uh, well, he got 50-50 for about three, four games. One, and two, lost two. I think something like that. It might have been better than that. I can't remember. But then, yeah, when COVID hit, we resumed rugby. They were absolutely trash. Yeah, they lost every single game. They did. Yeah. Were they close on any? Well, they might have been close. Yeah, I think like, they, were, they were close to be on quite fair, a few. To be fair, like, that's one of my favorite things about um, Super Rugby is that those derbies are... They were all close. All the New Zealand teams were None of them were insured. None of them were insured. But speaking of which, we haven't even <laughs> addressed what the hell this is. It's not a it's not a Crusaders jersey, jersey, but you're doing it for me. Uh, whatever uh, this thing is. I know you're a big Warriors fan. I'm a huge Warriors fan. So I thought I'd wear the, the Warriors gear. Just I to... I was meaning the one New Zealand Warriors, the rugby league team that plays in the NRL. But this Utah, I feel like I'm just staring at your tits. <laughs> Instead of my legs. <laughs> You're all legs and tits, you. Um, the Utah Warriors Utah rugby. Warriors. Who sent you that? Where did you get that guy from? Uh, yeah, I got sent it from uh, an American rugby fan who sent Fantastic. me a load of, um, of MLR jerseys. All right, okay. So I thought you were just going to finish with load. <laughs> he sent me a load. Um, yeah, so... Really? Um, so you got some ML- oh, MLR got, stuff? Yeah, yeah, basically. All right. So Major League Rugby, the old Utah Warriors. They play at altitude in the mountains. Yeah, and uh, Utah's famous for Mormons. Like to marry a lot of people, a lot of wives, a lot of polygamy goes on in Utah. You know more about it than me. I just know they've got a rugby team. <laughs> well, and yeah, well, maybe. Is Utah Jazz still a thing? Or are they uh, one of those franchises that got moved? I don't know, actually. Yeah, I, don't you're a, I thought you were an NBA guy. I oh, know, you're NHL. an NHL guy. All right. Uh, and what else have you got in terms of MLR jerseys? I oh, can't stop looking at your tits. Loads of them. Dallas really? Jackals. And the Dallas Jackals. The best one I've got. Jackals. I wish I'd brought it, but then I'd have to take my kit off. Because oh. Nola Gold, New Orleans. Uh-huh. They've got a jersey, which is like the home jersey, which is like mostly kind of a goldy color mm. with some white on it. Sexy. But if you flip it inside out, oh, it's the right. reverse. It's the away jersey. It's Holy genius. Shit. It's a two for one jersey. That's it's the scr- it's the only jersey I've got. Like a hundred jerseys. It's the only jersey I've that got. That is so good as a it's, fan. I know. That's brilliant. You can pick which one you want to wear. Holy god! If one gets dirty, you just flick it around the other way. <laughs> that's that's the approach I take to my underwear. Underwear. That's right. Exactly. exactly. Monday, Tuesday. You got, you got to worry. That, no, there's four ways you can wear underwear. So there's <laughs> normal, inside out. Back to front, back to front, inside out. Right. But it's always a bit dodgy when you start having skid marks on the outside of the front. That's that's when you got to ask yourself a few questions about what's going on. Six in your Nations. Life. So um, <laughs> we're Wales. How Gatlin's going to go? I honestly, I think don't hold a high hope. For expectations him, but Wales, in Wales, I think, are, are just quietly a wee bit high. I think people are expecting. They love him, eh? Because the last time. Gets was in charge of Wales during a World Cup year. They got a Grand Slam. So, 
Right. Just quietly, I think That's the expectations are huge. maybe not expecting that he's going to go get a grand slam, but certainly there are better, higher expectations than last year's. Now who result. have they got up first? Ireland, <laughs> but at home, at uh, home. It's a crazy and game. in the Six Nations, I don't think. When are the When are the games starting? When's the coverage starting? Uh, this weekend. So I know like it's starting this weekend. Three a.m. or something. <sighs> Stupid. Yeah. We're gonna live some live stream some stuff. Come over for a live stream. Come over. We can get drunk at three a.m. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Who's starting? Who, um, so it's so obviously not Friday night. Wales well, and Ireland right. is the first game. Wales and Ireland first game. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, you're, you're more than welcome. Oh, we keep the gate shut. <laughs> All right. No, it sounds like fun. Yeah. Uh, so three. But no, w- Wales have a good record against Ireland at home in the Six Nations. Right. Like, but both those teams have a good home record. So in the Six Nations, it tends to be between Wales and Ireland. The well, home until team very recently, those two teams have thought were. Pretty evenly matched, mm-hmm. you know. Two. Ireland just took a massive step up last year. Huge, yeah, huge. But Ireland, this is this is a massive year for Ireland. Oh, for sure. Considering you number know, one team in the world, number one team in the world, but a team that still has a huge monkey on. We talk about the All Blacks mm. having that big nineteen eighty seven to twenty eleven monkey on their back, and yeah. it's a kind of different kind of beast. Yeah. This monkey of never winning a, a quarter world final. quarterfinal World Cup game. And they're on the side of death, what we've talked about before. Yep. They're in a, on the side where they're going Wouldn't to have to Wouldn't it be great if Ireland were on the other side of the draw? Oh, sorry Just to let them... I know there's no easy games once you get to a quarterfinal, but just let them get past the quarterfinal without yeah. having to face Argentina. Yeah. Just let them get to a semifinal and just see how they go. Like Once you get to that semifinal... Who knows, it's all up. Exactly. But that quarterfinal but pressure gonna, is going to be incredible. They're either going to be... Assuming they make it. They're going to be playing the us, us or South Africa. Yeah, assuming we beat Italy. Yeah, okay. So the best case scenario for them, we have an absolute shocker, poo to bed, and don't they might get Italy, maybe, get Italy, which is unlikely. Kieran Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> that is against yeah. Fozzy. Oh, thank God. Uh, Jeez, imagine the podcast the week after if we go out in the polls. We'd get a lot of views. Yeah, we might get a few views. Um, unless it was on my channel. Um, <laughs> Put out more content between I'm now sorry, and then. I'm sorry, I'll put out some content. Um, and they won't all be top 10 lists. Um, okay. I did see on Reddit, someone was asking, like, oh, what are some good podcast recommendations? And one of the people said, oh, Two Cents gets distracted. Boom. If you want, like, kind of a lighthearted... You want, a, you want an idiot and a guy who knows a little bit about rugby. A little bit, you know a lot. I, I just know a lot of players' names. Yeah. And I'm like, that guy that <laughs> starts with C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, so it's um, interesting. Yeah, most of the time when you listen to a podcast, you listen to two experts, but we really flip that on its head. We just give you one expert and somebody who really likes experts. I just watch a lot of games. What's your job, really, isn't it? Kind of. I do have an irritating day job, unfortunately. It is irritating. Keeps a roof over roof over me. But yeah, yeah, definitely Ireland's expectations are pretty massive. I feel like they don't like the like the fans don't like the pressure of being number one. I think they'd just sneakily like to be to flying under the radar a little bit, but I mean, don't, don't be the all the, blacks the, at the, home. The expectations, if you keep winning all those games, is it going to kick on? So yeah, the fact that Ireland have got they got a France great. at home this year. This is, I mean, they haven't won a Six Nations under Andy Farrell. Yeah. So this needs to be the year. Oh, wow. So this is huge. Well, how is it, speaking of which, is it a little bit different having a Six Nations in the same year as a World Cup year? Because the World Cup, you know, even though it's rugby's greatest cha- greatest tournament, apparently the Six Nations, it's very special. Special. Uh, <laughs> there's a bigger tournament this year. There is a bigger. There's tournament a this year. bigger tournament, and it's all cocks on the line. And it's I, I don't mean that in a sexist way, uh, but <laughs> I mean like. That, that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Like, no one's going to be happy about your year if you win the Six Nations and you go out in the pools. Mm. Like, or if you go out in the quarters. Right. You know, which... So do they do they do a little bit like the FA Cup where they go a little bit lighter, they try a bit more rotation, they try and make mm. sure they've got a squad of 30 as opposed to a really tight 15. Yeah, yeah. Like, what, what's... I guess the difference with the Six Nations, because there's such a gap between the finish of that tournament and the start of the Rugby World Cup, they they can pretty much focus on the Six Nations. Right. And then they've still got a few Rugby World Cup warm-up games up their sleeves to, to do any kind of rotation. It's one where do you put all your cards on the table, like, 
was Eddie kind of keeping his mm. cards close to his chest with England to kind of bust out some master plan? Obviously, we'll never know. But what's yeah, like you you watch, you know, certain like well, I'm actually just thinking of Squidge right now. Like, but when I watch some of his videos and then he goes, well, as you can see, they've got a three-two-three formation. I'm like, what? Like, it was, it was, so there's going to be some really, really radical stuff right. in terms of the formation of players and all that sort of stuff that you're going to set hold. Set plays that they haven't shown, yeah. Yeah, I, guess I can understand set plays, mm. but even just the nature of how you set up your attack and set up your defense, mm. that's going to change from tournament to tournament? Mm. Or do you just try and build on what you have to make it as slick as possible and mm. just repetition and repetition, repetition in the fire to the point when you get to those huge moments that it's just like clockwork? And it's mm. not just off the training pitch. But it's you know in battle tested in like you know huge Six Nations games mm. as well. Like there's so many different ways you can kind of tackle it. But everybody kind of talks about um, the way Eddie was holding stuff back. It yeah. was a very very common theme. Yeah. Real. I don't. Uh, I'm not smart enough to quite understand what people are holding back and what they're putting forward and mm. all that sort of stuff. Do you notice that shit? I, I do feel like the teams they have to change their game plans to meet the challenges of certain other teams like I feel like the All Blacks if you remember prior to the last Rugby World Cup we got beaten by Ireland yeah and was it 2018 where we went to Dublin we got beaten by them yeah and then the whole thing was man we can't handle the rush defence and then they started That's tinkering right. like let's play Bodie at fullback and we'll put Richie so we've got two kicking options put a lot of kicks through a lot of and kicks then, out wide and we're still wide. holding and then, on to that when we played Ireland at the World Cup we flogged them in a quarter final right and it seemed like wow they had all their plans set to be like let's beat Ireland and then they did and then they lost to England the next uh, week so yeah I think it's and it's then, definitely a thing and then you could say England had all their plans to beat, beat New Zealand, New Zealand right. and then they lost to South, South Africa, Africa yeah. which was a team that the All Blacks beat earlier in the tournament yeah exactly so the All Blacks are still the only team of World Cup history not to lose a pool game yeah, and that's going to be an interesting one when we play France in the opening game. Well, we played, well, yeah. So, well, we played South Africa in the pools last time. Yeah, we beat them. And we beat them. Yeah. But we never, I'm never like, I'm never, it's arrogant, but I'm never surprised by, oh, actually, I was about to say, I'm never surprised by an all back when I was a little bit surprised when we managed to pull that one out Enjoy of the fire. Ellis Park, yeah. So, that mm. was, that was pretty big. Yeah, we went into that one genuine. The bookies had us as the underdogs. <laughs> like that never usually happens. It just doesn't happen. So. Very, very rarely. But we, we had lost like four out of yeah five games going into that. Yeah, the form book even counts on the mighty All Blacks. The mighty All Blacks. Anyway, we're not talking about them right now. <laughs> I was just thinking England. how do we turn the Six Nations into England. the All Blacks chat? England new coach. Borthwick. Steve Borthwick. He was remarkably successful with Leicester Tigers. Now, I haven't followed the Premiership for long enough to know that much detail about it. All I know is Leicester Tigers kind of were like the Crusaders of They're old. The, they the used, used to be yeah. bloody good. Yep. And then in more recent years, right as I started following it, they were kind of crap. They were always right. flirting with relegation. Like the Brisbane Broncos of, of okay, the... It's a league um, reference. Which just they've always been amazing, but right. they've had a pretty lean few years. Right, and then Borthwick comes in and gets them to a championship title right. in, the, in the previous season. So now he's left and Leicester Tigers are... Shit in the bed. Basically, yeah. So mm. he's not got a heck of a long head Farrell's coaching team? record. Farrell's team is Leicester? He played... Andy... Uh, yeah. Farrell, by the, both the Farrells, the final they played for Saracens. Yeah, I knew that. Um, I knew that. I get those two confused. Saracens are another pretty good club. So Leicester are the green and the red team. Aren't That's they? right. There we go. That's yep. nice. Solid. Nice. Well, I remember when I lived in the UK, like that was like the super like, glamour popular right. team. They were like the Manchester United. Right. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of, Leicester Fyngonuku, I think, is named after Leicester Tigers because they were just so good at the time he was born. Seriously, I think so. Wow. Yeah, oh, shit. So it's like Tenny Blues O'Sullivan yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Crusader so, O'Sullivan. Um, so yeah, that's uh, his head head coaching record is not that extensive, but it's successful. I read somewhere that he's basically like he's got a close had a close relationship and a coaching affiliation with Eddie Jones. Yeah, he used to be one of Eddie Jones's assistants before he took the list the head coaching job. So so is that odd? Like the fact that the a guy that kind of cut his teeth 
under Eddie Jones mm. and they both know each other's style mm. inside and out. Mm. There is just all these layers of this. Mm. This is a yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's going to be very tasty. They, oh, they have to meet. They yeah, have yeah. to meet. God, let it happen. Yeah, it's got to happen. But for the Six Nations, I think they're kind of a little bit under the radar because of how hyped up the Irish are and because of how expectations are super high with the French. So yeah. England are not really got that pressure. Usually when I've followed the Six Nations odds, England are usually favourites, favourites or second favourites. So two, yeah. this is one of the few years that they are third favourites. So right. maybe they go into it with a little bit less pressure. New coach not really expected to win, but yeah. maybe expected to do better than we saw from them, you know, in recent times. So Well I think it's good for World Rugby to have a good England. Mm-hmm. It? And I think it's good for World Rugby to have a good Wales. I actually want all. I want it to be a super tight comp. Mm. I want Italy to win two. Mm. That's what I like. You know, I want to see these teams go, and then the more teams we can get in coming behind them, the likes of Georgia and all that sort of mm. stuff. Give me rugby's a great game. If we get more of these players, get more countries, out. get more countries because they're still pretty. There's a getting, handful. It yeah. gets bigger. Yeah. You know, over time, but mm. but then like the likes of the USA still not quite. They didn't even qualify for the World Cup. Yeah, I know. Mm. They'll be crying into their... What are they in Utah? <laughs> I don't know. What are they? They're mountain people. What yeah. are they? They're crying into their... Budweiser's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Generic American yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Modelo's? That's is that uh, American beer, is it? It's an American... It might be like the American-Mexican beer. Okay. They uh, grab yourself a Modelo is uh, one of the UFC things. Okay. You know? Who have we not talked about the Six Nations? Scotland. Yet? Scotland. Oh, God. <laughs> it's shape being Scottish. I feel like Scotland should be better because they've got some really good players. Man of Earth. They've got a coach who's been there for God knows how many years now. Yeah. And every year... Is Finn, is he in the team or is he pissed off the coach again? Team. I haven't I like, named his like team him. yet, but he's in the squad. But every McCurry, year, like every him. year, it's just like, they should be better than fourth. But every year, it's just like they win a game against England and then they lose the next one. Controversial take. I think the best one-on-one series of the whole year last year was uh, Scotland Argentina. Argentina was in terms class. of like, in terms of like quality rugby, fun, just yeah, fun yeah, games. Really fun. And then Scotland rested a lot of times for that tour as well, so mm. no, it was really good. So who have they got? They got Fan Van Van der Verve. They got um, who's the? I want to say Contepony, but he's a uh, he's an Argentinian, yeah, he's an Argentinian player. who plays in Scotland. That's the thing. He plays at Edinburgh. Oh, Buffelli. Buffelli, that's the guy. Buffelli. Buffelli, that's He plays for Argentina. Well, that's what I'm He's talking about. He's not going to be in the situation. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. Well, like, who am I thinking of? Um, he does play for one of the Scottish clubs. Yeah, he plays so. at Edinburgh. Yeah. That's the oh, problem. Oh, nice. There you go. Well, you've been watching some URC. No, I just remember watching. He scored the try right at the end of the of the series in like the last second. Right. They're like, oh, that stings. He plays uh, at Edinburgh. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Nice. But then I managed to completely fuck it up on the podcast. Nice. But, yeah. No, they got some good players, man. Uh-huh. Hamish Watson, Jamie Ritchie, a couple of really good loose forwards. They got former Wallaby Jack Dempsey in the squad who's been getting who's some... The, who's the captain? Captain Jamie Ritchie. Jamie Ritchie. He usually plays blindside. And he's a he's a strapping young lad, isn't he? He's pretty good at the old breakdown, gets to a lot of work. And it's, I think, smarter well, like, to play a loose forward as your captain instead of Hog. Is it like, bad? Hog needs to just, just stay at fullback. Like, you don't want to have to run up to the ref to talk to him every time. It's just practically, it, it's not great to have a fullback. Uh, outside captain. backs, and outside backs could be great captains, but it's just not strategically a great If it's going to be a back, to, your nine is a good option, because he's always there. Nine or even a ten, perhaps, yeah. maybe. But yeah. The like these tend to be. There have been a lot of good captains who have been loose forwards. And hookers. Hookers. Yeah. A lot of hookers are captain. I did my top ten list of hookers, a lot of captains. and like seven of them were the captains. Like, mm. Sean Fitzpatrick, Keith Wood... Um, some others. John Schmidt. <laughs> yeah, John Schmidt. Uh, who was the um, the oh, the uh, Frenchman that I'm thinking of? He beat us in 2007 and 1999. Another one you mean? Uh, Raphael. Ibanez. Ibanez. Yes, that's right. I know names. You do know names. Yeah, and it was Keith Wood wasn't even a captain, was he? No. But anyway, a lot yeah, of captains. A lot of captains. Not a lot of locking captains. Right. Sam Whitelock does a little bit on the side. Mm. 
I love it that he's a lock and his name's White Lock. That's <laughs> fantastic. It is. It's brilliant. It's really fantastic. It's a real key identifier. Yeah. And the strange world of personal pronouns. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you know, it's not a pronoun, but yeah. it's just an invasion, but it's... We need a winger whose name winger or something yeah, like that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That would be phenomenal. Or a flanker called Wankrag, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the same. Um, but yeah, no, Scotland, we've got a lot of talented players. They just seem destined to not win it every yeah. time every time I get my hopes up a little I don't know why it is like every year I kind I feel of like double down them. I double down on my Talk hopes directly to the them. camera I'm going to grab a beer okay but <laughs> I, I double down I'm on my hopes I'm I do seriously I double down on my hopes for Scotland every year I look at the playing staff and then they just manage to lose like there's that one game every time where you're like man if they can just win this one they'll be in with a shout and they manage to lose it I don't know how that works I think Scotland fans are kind of used to it at this point it's almost like being a Blues fan you're just like oh the Blues look pretty good this year and yeah, then we good. play the Crusaders and we're like right shit the bed back to normal so maybe that's the affinity I have they both wear blue they both get kind of like reserved expectations and they manage Scottish, to kind of shit the even bed. though you've got a Welsh name mm. you look kind of Scottish is it because I'm stingy that's like the, 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 the stereotype yeah well, how many times do you use a tea bag? Just once. Well, you're not that stingy. Okay. Somebody's really stingy uses a tea bag twice. Okay. Now that I've put that in your head, you're like, can I use them twice? I'm going to have to start <laughs> trying this. That was amazing, though, leaving and walking away. I felt like I was at a live episode of uh, Two Cents Rugby. Oh, nice. One of your videos, because you were just got me straight, on the to, huh? straight to camera. This was your whiteboard. Oh, nice. yeah, it was, yeah, it was just on the, on the background while I'm making dinner, which is how I usually watch you. Oh, nice. You know? Nice. Um, so they get your hopes up. You think they're going to be better than they are. And then they, they, just, get down. they just dash it every year. They shit year. your beard. Yeah, pretty much. Shit your beard. I would love it for them to win it. It'd be great. Well, I think, when was the last time there was a, su- a serious boil over in, the, in um, the Six Nations? Like, how on earth did they win that? You know, I mean, How on earth did they win the tournament? Wales won it under Pivac in the year where Everybody virtually got, every got a red card against them. So, dumb luck? At the time, I was thinking, not just lucky... But then, in hindsight, you think, maybe it was just a bit lucky. So, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, have we covered the team? Well, France. France, yeah. France. We have not talked about the favourites. They certainly have a harder fixtures list this year than they did last year, mainly because they have to the travel stunning. to Dublin. Oh. Yeah. Whereas last year, they had the Irish at home. This okay. year, they've got to go away. So, so. that could be... That could be the, the decider. Right. I mean, based on what the bookies have got, that is the decider, but other teams might have something to say I know about got, it. I know we've got new coaches. And I should say France have got a, a few key guys out from memory, some of their um Aren't they a guys. team full of freaks, really, at the moment? Oh, they've got so much depth, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Fabien yeah. Gaultier is just... He's got this weird knack of like going, hey, that guy plays Division 2, he's bloody good, and then he'll bring him into the French squad, and then he'll play him, and everyone's like, holy shit, that guy's amazing, and then he'll get picked up by one of the wow. top 15 sides. So he's got that Alex Ferguson. He's got that knack of just wow. picking talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's impressive. That's how um, Christian Cullen kind of got on. Is that right? Play played for Horofenua. Okay. Was he playing... Uh, Spencer was playing for Horofenua originally, okay. and then he played the Auckland team in a shield game and then he that's how he came on the Auckland radar because he fucking carved up the, they got they got spanked by 40 or right. whatever points but they're like shit that, guy that guy's good like yeah, yeah 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 and I think uh, I think it might be Horofina whether that um, the Kai Kakariki Express played for too Kai Kakariki Express? No Kai Kakariki it's his younger brother <laughs> <laughs> right Kai Kakariki thank you for our foreign audiences would have known. No, they, they wouldn't have known. known. I just had to call you out on yeah, it. Thanks, I appreciate Sorry about that. that. I, I, I once, once, I once. did that with stats. I picked a Six Nations, like, team of the tournament, and I picked Hamish Watson as my seven, because I was like, this guy is freaking incredible. Like, his yeah. stats are amazing. And because reputation-wise... Tom Curry from England. Everyone is an English viewing audience a lot bigger. That guy's got a much bigger... Everyone was like, how the hell can you not pick Curry, idiot? You know what I mean? Like a lot of negative feedback. I encourage, and then that. The, I encourage that on my videos. The so. next year, I think he got player of the Six Nations like tournament. And I was like, told you. 
You're, that guy's you. pretty good. It that's, wasn't me. It's just the stats. Look at the numbers gone. He's got some numbers. That's why I'm I making you my numbers. That's why I'm making you my assistant coach. When yeah, I play I'll, I'll run the numbers for you. You'll run the numbers. Get I'll myself, like, I'll, I'll, I've got the greatest statistician in the world. Get your whiteboard out, Mike. Let's let's mm. let's turn this team around. You know, I don't think that's going to happen. But you know, it's not a job that I'd want. Really, no, too much pressure. And to be fair, there's there's no one in the world uh, asking me to apply for it either. Really. This is probably also true. What do you, in terms of your channel, what I'd like to see is can we get a little bit more closeness to the teams, the, to the players? Can we get some field two cents? Two cents reporting from the field, like out of the training. Do you want to actually interview players? Maybe a little bit. I think you'd be good. But you might ask some questions that are a little bit different. You know, what would you. It'd be a different skill set. How's uh, how's training camp in this? How's training going this week? How's the boys? Because I feel like Don't a lot of questions. journalists ask dumb questions, but I'm not convinced I could ask better questions because I feel like players and coaches are trained to give really generic answers. Mm, they're all kind of media trained now, aren't they? Yeah, I don't yeah. think you get that much value out of the questions. So some of the coaches give us some spicy stuff, mm. don't they? And there are players out there who are trying to create their own sort of media persona mm. and stuff like that. You're not going to do it, are you? Despite my uh, recommendation that you get out there. Probably not. Maybe you can incorporate it with your walking channel. Just all of a sudden, like, decide to walk with, like, old players. Like, oh, Mark's walking with Victor Vito. <laughs> Wasn't he overseas? I don't know. Is he still playing? I don't know. Did he retire? He might have retired last year. Exactly. That's how you can start. You're like, well, we haven't seen you for a while. Have you retired? What's going on? How's the family? I feel, Marks, like, it, I feel like walking I, I feel like you'd get better engagement from retired players than you would with current players because retired players don't have anything to kind of hide. They're not going to worry about being dropped yeah, or about right. getting criticised. They can just you know they can tell you the, there'd the be some cool stories actually. That'd be cool to get some retired players telling some mm. stories. Oh, but who the hell am I? I'm just some dude. Dude, you're the second biggest rugby YouTuber in the world, and you'll be the biggest in no time. <laughs> Keep on. What are you? What sixty thousand? 50. 50. That's a lot. In I, YouTube terms, that is like minuscule. I don't even have a... Uh, I, when I, I got my, 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 it, my, my Italian depth chart video got demonetized by YouTube for being I hateful that. and offensive. I watched that immediately and I was like, why is he being so hateful and, and offensive? I, I don't even have... like. I, I think once you get big enough, YouTube gives you like a liaison. Like you can, like an actual person you can talk to and go, what's the deal with this? You're not quite but there. But I'm not there. So I just have the generic... The, the AI did a review and was like, this is cool. And then a human did a review and was like, nope, this has got hateful content. And then I was like, oh, I've got an option to appeal that. So I appealed it. And they were like, nope, this is definitely hateful. Yeah, I had one like that, but there was hateful content. Well, it right. wasn't hateful. It was like violent content. It was right. about the top 10 grubs and there was a dog getting kicked. Right. In like the first 15 seconds or right. something. Which I was like, it was a fake dog. It was a right. scene from Ank Anchor I just think they don't maybe understand what I was saying. Cause, like, uh, I was maybe saying an accent thing? Excellent thing, maybe because I was saying so Italian I went, names. I saw your tweet, and then I was was like, <laughs> maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And but that, I, I'm not even big enough to have a YouTube liaison. That's well, I don't have a YouTube liaison. So. But you got you got like who's the next biggest after you? Who would it be? I'm not sure. sure. Kiwi Lads is twenty thousand. I'd be him then. You reckon? For sure. What about the rugby analyst? What does he got? I'm not sure. 10, 12, 15? Uh, Maybe 20. He might have. I haven't watched him for a while. My, actually. Me I need to get in touch with that guy. Six Nations is coming. Oh, uh, yeah. He'll know. His, he'll know. His this is all. This is his bread and butter. This is this is when he makes his cheddar, isn't it? Bear me. Yeah. I'm going to bear you, pal. Hold on. Do you want me to? I feel like this is an improper use of a, a rainbow unicorn. You're going to get us demonetized. By using a rainbow unicorn mm -hmm. here, bro. It's inappropriate. And it's inappropriate. Oh. Didn't do it for the first time. Not as impressive. Not Pressure's as impressive. on now. There we go. Thank you, sir. Ooh, that's nice. And cold. It's a cold one. Um, but it helped. My God, Mark, this is a huge year. I'm excited. It's another um, month closer. We're in February. The Rugby World Cup's not that far away. November? Yeah, it was closer than that, isn't it? Is it October? I don't know. Who are the All Blacks got? Well, let's take it back to the All Blacks. This is my safe zone. Hold on. Before you get to the All Blacks currently, there was one other thing I had on my little list. All right, yeah. And that's former All Black Campbell Johnston, who's 
when I read his name, I didn't remember who he was. Neither did I, but good on him. Apparently he played for the All Blacks a few times and played for the Crusaders. Good on you, man. But a huge, huge, huge moment. Came out as gay. <laughs> you say it with like... A they didn't bit even say gay in the tweet, though. They, they, they put a like, rainbow flag and they said... Why can't they say gay? Is that like a bad word? No, it's it's well. We grew up in a in an era where we used to say, mm, "Stop being so gay." Yeah, but, but you don't like, do that but you nobody does that anymore. But um, well, some people do, but like, <laughs> it's not a good thing to do. But yeah. like, yeah, and then we, that was just the way people talked back then. Mm. Uh, but there was, it's gay is fine. Like, I know a lot of gay people, and they're, they're quite happily describe themselves as gay mm. and all that sort of thing. But uh, beside that, beside the kind of weirdness of them not being able to say gay and just putting a rainbow because rainbow, yeah. otherwise I would have been like well, what are we actually talking about yeah, here yeah 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 um, huge moment because there was um, there's never been a, there's never, never been an openly over a, gay over a thousand, all black up until this point over a thousand all blacks mm. and statistically one in ten people are, are homosexual right so and there's I, still a lot well yeah unless it's just very rare for all blacks to be gay which is, is seems certainly unlikely probably not there must be a, a few closeted gay men who, who don't feel comfortable to come out. So hopefully or who is... have passed away, you know? Right. So, like, it's a huge moment uh, for, because in New Zealand, especially, rugby is associated so much with uh, blokeyism, mm. sort of um, masculine behavior, mm. but not even positive masculine behavior, like toxic masculinity Cambridge. a yeah, lot yeah, of times, yeah. and like, rah, 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 fucking, I don't know, all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, don't, yeah. Be a, don't be a softy, whatever, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, so it's a huge moment for this team that this whole nation and a lot and a lot of regards the world puts on a huge mm. pe- pedestal as the epitome of like masculine yeah. sort of contact sport and, and the best team in the world to actually have a homosexual in the team and somebody mm. who's out doing that and he seems like a relatively understated kind mm. of guy and was not aiming to be this focal point right. of any sort of movement or anything like that, but it's a massive moment and it's, it's a really, really positive thing to see. Mm. And like, hopefully it opens the doors, not only for players of the past, but it's entirely up to them as to yeah. what they want to do. Yeah. Or, but even like current players, like That's players sure. to be able to be open about, be that. Open about their, their sexuality and be okay to be who they are yeah. and represent yeah. who they want to represent and, and their loved ones. Yeah. So it's 2023. Like, I just want to get to a point where we genuinely don't care who anybody has as their partner. I remember when Sir Khaleesi got married. Like his missus is some blonde white chick know, and really? a few people. I mean, I guess it's a different thing. Different countries have got different. They was like, oh, interracial marriage. I was like, I genuinely just want to see people on the rugby field making tackles yeah. and crunching and getting tries and stuff. Like, I, I, I genuinely don't care. Yeah. Like, I don't, like, whoever your partner is, your partner is, like, I just, I just don't care. I'm talking about you. <laughs> I really um, don't care. Yeah. That's none of my business. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. But, I mean, I see the point that this kind of breaks that ice of it being the first guy to actually come out and say it. Yeah. And the response from it, like, Adi Sabe going, man, if there was a gay or black, we would welcome him with open, open arms. arms. And TJ Pernal said something similar. So, yeah. hopefully that... You know, like I said, just just so, opens that door, so it people can be don't pretty, feel worried about it. You know, playing rugby all like all of my youth, like it can be a pretty homophobic. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, teenage boys, man. You know, teenage boys and all that sort of stuff, and calling people, you know, f words and all that sort of stuff, otherwise yeah. known as cigarettes. Um, you know, and it was just common speech, yeah. like on a rugby field, you'd yeah. be called that. I'm not or sure like, what that's like in schools nowadays, but I can't imagine it's changed that much? I think it's changed a more bit? than you think Maybe, like it's yeah. it's a far more open and, and appreciative society towards uh, those with gender diversity and sexual right. diversity and there's you know there's a whole kettle of worm, kettle of worms and, and that topic mm. in rugby at the moment but in terms of who you choose to love and who you choose to be with yeah. that shouldn't impact you know don't care yeah 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 it, it really shouldn't but it, it's easy to say like I don't care on the yeah. side but in terms of Human beings are just gossiping little That's true. folks. We we want to know what's going on. Like if you I came, I in, actually don't. You, I actually don't care. If, I'm one of those people. If you came into the, in here like to, the, tonight and said, "Boy, boy, 
me and the messes last night <laughs> hammer and tongs i'll be like <laughs> tell me do a diagram <laughs> like, like i'm i, I want to know like and i think i uh, because it's just interesting right. it's, it's stuff that goes on right. like and then like I, I see people's partners and stuff i'm like whoa this punch above his weight or, <laughs> or, or, or I just, you know like you just have okay. these thoughts we, we're human we can embrace our humanity around this okay. but you know there there is a huge amount of like weird stuff around that and like if purely about the sport right. is a nice way to approach it like i don't go chasing whose partners who right. or anything like yeah. that but just in terms of the civil rights of the whole mm-hmm. thing it's a massive moment yeah i understand definitely yeah. how it's a massive moment i think it's important and like i said i do hope it just helps to normalize that for anyone else who's kind of hesitant about what reaction they're going to get because the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive yeah but genuinely for rugby players, who they vote for, who they marry, but what they like to have for dinner, I just don't give a shit. What they like just, to... just just play rugby. Play rugby. Did you hear about the RFU for amateur rugby banning tackles? Ah, oh, yeah. yes. Oh, so I it's think... like a, it's like a, that's a totally different kind of negative news story, but it's another kind of one where it's it sucks. Like I think that it's just absolute balls. Like it's gonna, it's a different game. Like a ball and all tackle stops the defender. Like at the end of the day, you stop the man because he's got the ball. Mm. You're, you're actually the actual point is to stop the ball from progressing down the field. If you tackle above the waist, you know, like if Sonny Bill Williams would have, like his ability to get his arms free and offload, like it changes the whole nature of. The sport like i think they said their wording was a bit wrong it's oh, more like closer to sternum i think from what they've said it's not quite as low as what they initially worded man, it as. I, i'm a simple man i'm like big hits big tits and good games <laughs> <laughs> i like that shit. like i don't yeah. want people to get concussed and have ct and have problems yeah. i don't want high shots or anything like that yeah. but if somebody comes at you there and like hits you so hard you forget your own name but remember theirs forever that is, oh, mm. that's some great stuff. And that's why the fans are like into it. Yeah. Like, uh, obviously it's, it's, no, no, we don't want, I at, remember at growing am, up. At amateur level, it needs to be simple because these are just guys looking to blow off some steam on the weekend. You know what I mean? So, But they've been playing, there, like you, you, guys are playing at club rugby, at, you know, even senior or whatever it is. They're still kind of amateur, but. They've been playing since they were five, a lot mm. of them. Like, I remember, you know the game. Mm. Like, like we weren't making a huge amount of hit, hit, hit highs, but I remember mm. playing in, like, open grades when I was, like, 61 kilos. I was one kilo over going into the open weight. And then, like, playing, like, 110 kilo island guys. <laughs> and just getting, <laughs> getting absolutely... Oh, man. Ruth, ruthlessly, you know, yeah. owned. You know, like, and it was... But like, I don't know, was that bad? Did I get CT? I don't think I, I think mm. I'm okay. But I we used know. to have a regular lunchtime game going to my school and all of these boys who didn't play rugby for the school would play in this lunchtime yeah. game. And then every now and again, one of the first 15 guys would see us playing and just join in and, and just, absolutely oh, yeah. flatten every one yeah, of us. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Good times. It is. Well, yeah, it's a weird, like I definitely think I would have had a few concussions on the field and it's a weird feeling. Like... Mm. There were a few. It was always be when I was just like doing the old Reuben Thorne, like, like leaning on a rock, <laughs> like, just like not quite doing what I was meant to be doing, and someone would be like, "Oh, free hit here!" Boom, boom. and, and then, then you you, just, you feel yeah. two hits. You feel the ground, like the boom, and then you feel the ground, and you're just looking up at the sky. How like, did that happen? That, that, that moment, happened. and you yeah. hear, ooh, in the crowd, <laughs> you're like, "Oh, that was me." That's a great moment. Yeah, yeah, and that. Yeah, or just getting absolutely smoked when you're taking it up. I remember my old man when I was in sixth grade or something like that. He said to me, "You need to run it more. You need to run it more. Like you're always just trying to, like, you know, the work you do is fine, but just pick up the ball sometimes and have a run." I was like, "All right, okay." Like, <laughs> <laughs> your dad's advice. Take my dad's advice, and then I was like, "Okay, here we go." The back of the mall, I usually just sort of like clean out or just feed it on or whatever I do but I was like I have a go and then I picked it up and just ran and, and so finished. like the most athletic biggest athlete on the thing and then, then my dad said afterwards said 
I'm sorry about that advice. <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> I made a mistake, yeah. Terrible, terrible yeah, mistake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although I think they're following on with this RFU thing from what's already being done in France and what's being done here. What in is it? The French experiment or something? something yeah, like the that. French one I think is sternum and below, and I think that's the same in NZ. So, so is this going to be worldwide soon? I think it'll be worldwide eventually. I don't know. So if a hit here, that's illegal. Yeah. Hit there is okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So titty down. Just trying to get. There's some zone they talk about like. From a certain point, I think like chest and above is like the red zone, and then you get into like the the green zone. There's an orange zone as well. Like there's like the down by the knees is also a red zone. What have you? Like it's pretty somebody? dangerous. Is that a red zone? I think probably for the tackler, it's red zone. But then there was this um, there was this tackle in the sevens where this Australian girl got um, yellow carded. Right. And it's it looks crazy. Like they both go into perfect crouching position. She could right. not got got bend any anymore. Any lower, but the other person was like going down low, and right. she got yellow carded because it was head on head. Right. So the uh, rugby incidents are still going to happen. The annoying thing about that, I think, is the interpretation because I've seen a lot of well, I don't say a lot, but there's definitely like three or four times where I've seen a tackler who's fully bent at the hips. Yeah. Tackle somebody, and it's been head on head, and the ref has just been like, "That tackler's doing everything right, so there's no foul play." But that's even though it's head on head. Sometimes, yeah. And they yell, often they'll still give a penalty and they'll often still give a yellow card. The inconsistency card. is the thing that's annoying. Yeah. And, but where is the onus on the ball holder? Yeah. The attacker? Like, if you're moving down like that, obviously, like, you, you're told to, like, run with a low body yeah, position. Yeah. yeah, run with a low body position, like, get low. Especially, yeah. like, when you're, you know, you're around the ruck and you're mm. just trying to make the game line. You want to go low and, like, run at their knees. Like, yeah. my old man would, well, back to the old man, he'd be like, you know try and when you're close to the line just dive at people's shins yeah like and how do you stop someone who's doing mm. that to you you know you know without what are you supposed to do just lie on your on your back uh, with i your think the reaction was, was massive i feel like give it a season and see how it goes but i guess we don't want to have head injuries head right? injuries are definitely bad head, head injuries are definitely I, I like the big hits. Let's make it like the NRL until very recently. I was going to say the NRL seems to be a little bit less uh, interfering with the way that they pull. They had, to police the game, but like control the game. But if, back in the like, not even that long ago, we're talking five, six. They still had shoulder charges, they, right? Well, they were allowed, you're allowed to do shoulders. You're allowed to leave the shoulder, and then they were just like, as long as it wasn't like a coat hanger where you were swinging arm into someone's head. If you did a shot and someone came up to you and I just popped you in the chin right. and you went down, they'd be like, fair shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and I used to love that coat hanger stuff back in the day. <laughs> yeah. But then, now that yeah. I've got children, I'd be like, man, if my son was playing and somebody did that to him, I probably wouldn't enjoy that very much. No, of course he wouldn't. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's that balance between like, you know, uh, raw entertainment like mm. I'd be like I, I'd like to say I was better than it but I'd be that guy in the Coliseum going blood yeah, exactly you know like yeah. but versus you know the actual welfare and the safety mm. of these players who are humans who have yeah. families and are fathers and brothers and mm. sons and all that sort of stuff yeah. oh dear but who is going to win the World Cup the World Cup. No, okay. the, this big switcheroo on you. Did okay. that. Switcheroo. Who's going to win it this year? I mean, easy answer is France. But who's going to win it? What's your gut say? Guts is France. Guts is France, France and gut. I still feel like France have got the chance to choke it, but because they won the Six Nations last year, I feel like they've got a little bit of a monkey off their back. Yeah. I feel like they're a pretty confident team who don't go into any game thinking they're going to lose. That kind of arrogance, you know what I mean? Which is a, a healthy kind of arrogance. A bit like the All Blacks. All Blacks back in the day, yeah. yeah. They've genuinely got a good team across the park in every position. And they're like, we'll win. Yeah, so that's that's it. Who's your... Um, if it's not if it's not them... Who do you think is going to win the World Cup? I want the All Blacks to win. I also uh, want the All Blacks yeah, to win. Yeah, I, I, I very much do want the All Blacks to win. Uh, they're certainly not the favourites. Uh, second team I'd want to win is Ireland. I'd like yeah. to see, I'd like, but I wouldn't actually mind seeing France win. They've made two finals. It'd be nice to see someone new to win it if the All Blacks can't win it. A France or yeah, yeah, I wouldn't like to see. No offense to South Africa. Um, love you all. Uh, you won win. the last one. 
You won the last one. You won two before. Like to see, so you won't. You won't want. They wouldn't want us to see, see us win four. Probably, yeah. So, fair, fair play. You know, I if South Africa never won one and they were always a great team, I'd be kind of happy for them. Right, exactly. But there would be something nice about Wales. No, you don't like Gatland. You can't imagine uh, Gatland. I like. I, li- I do really like the Welsh. Um, but I just it's not even worth hoping for because I think they're so far off the pace right now. Okay. But hey, crazy things have happened. Australia. Oh. <laughs> Felt like it was very odd the way you said Australia then. Australia. <laughs> Felt like you were trying to pick me up at a bar. <laughs> Australia, would you? Come um, here off it. <laughs> um, well, they, under Rennie, they were the best shit team in the world and they were very close to mm-hmm. beating some of the best teams in the world. Like... That game against France, that was one of my favorite games to that watch the whole, yeah, whole year, sure. and I was like, they're going to freaking pull this off. Yeah, and they didn't. Are we going to do some live streams this year? I think we should. Yeah, yeah. We the had last a... one got demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, that, that one, I didn't appeal. When that one got demonetized, I was like, okay, fair enough. I didn't yeah, even yeah. appeal it. Yeah. yeah, but then you get a human reviewer to watch us. No, I didn't. I didn't want to put anyone through that. Well, those are like you make money in the live stream with those, don't you? When they get so. demonetized, do they take your your donation? No, they don't back? take it back. No, I'm like oh, you owe us twenty bucks. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, no, that doesn't but happen. A huge, huge year for rugby, and it's it's exciting. Did you answer who you think is going to win the World Cup? I think. I don't. I don't know. I think. There's so many teams I wouldn't be surprised if they won. You know what? I'd be. You're gonna answer this question. I, I know. I'm, I'm torn. I would be genuinely surprised. I I hate to say this. Can I tell you that this is an opinion I have? A, a um, which I feel is a very un- unpopular opinion. Okay. I would be surprised if Ireland make it out of the uh, make it into a semi final. Okay. I think just the weight, like if they were on the other side of the of the draw, draw I think mm-hmm. they got a way better chance. But I think. The South weight Africa of expectations, South Africa and New Zealand in a, a, a If Ireland can beat minor. New Zealand in New Zealand, which they had also never done before in a series, does that mean the monkey, or is it a different kind of That's monkey? That's a different monkey, man. That's a huge, huge effort. Mm. And I think they were by far a better team than us right. in that tournament. But I just think... Plus, we won the first game of that. Pressure, point. history, expectation does funny things to, to people. Mm, mm. And I think, I like, I definitely could be wrong, but I, I, I think that it doesn't favor them to pay, play two teams who have huge amounts of success at World, World Cups, Cups, you know, in, in that game. If and that's, Ireland that's, and did if they, knock the All Blacks out, would you then go to support Ireland? 100%, your second team? 100%, 100% would support Ireland. And I, 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 if they're playing South Africa, boy, I want them to win that. Like, I, I'd be, if they beat... If, if the All Blacks beat them, I'll be like, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Mm, I'll, be like, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be like, Ugh. but then I'll be like, in the coming days, I'll be like, oh, that's sorry, a, that's, again. A sh- that's a shame, bugger. But I'll be genuinely like a little bit conflicted. Yeah. Uh, but if they get beaten by South Africa in, in, in the quarterfinal, I'll be genuinely like, this is shit. Mm. You know, so. But I, 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 it just doesn't feel like, okay. it, it doesn't feel good. For me, for, mm. for them in that situation, but you know, uh, it, it's not a great sign. It's not a great sign for the All Blacks to be on either, is it? We haven't talked about Argentina. Argentina maybe a dark horse for the World Cup. We think it's a bridge too far. They always seem to lift their game at World Cups. Yeah, would you reckon they've got the coach for it? Chica. Yeah, oh, cheeky, cheeky. Chica and Eddie Jones are my, for my money, the two of the most, most entertaining, entertaining, entertaining coaches. Chica's taking a bit of a chill. Pill since uh, yeah, his son with the Aussies. I think he's got less pressure on him than Argentina. He really lost his biscuit towards yeah, the end of the, the, end of the World Cup. He wasn't in a good place. Yeah, and they were just playing dumb rugby out mm. there. Like they, he yeah, just, he was just like, oh, we're just going to play our game. And they just re- like, oh, it's not working. No, we're just going to play our game. We're going to play our game. Look, I can't control what happens out there. Mm. We're just going to back our skills. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, like, that doesn't. Well, that's not how it works. Yeah, and like yeah, they they kicked really stupidly. And yeah, they exactly. Just, the kicking they just, game was they just ran from everywhere. Like yeah. I love a running game more than a, a kicking game personally. But uh, you've got to play smart. Yeah, and they didn't play smart. And then he was just so uh, combative. Yeah, very combative. Yeah, which he wouldn't was, take any but, criticism. Yeah, which was entertaining. <laughs> yeah, but a bit sad. But odd, entertaining yeah. but odd. Yeah, uh, no, I don't think they're going to win the World Cup. Though. Okay. But hey, if they did win the World Cup, what a story. 
What a story. What would that Argentina would be the uh, football World Cup champions and yes, the rugby World Cup champions. Wouldn't that be impressive? It would be very impressive. Or France could have could have been the team to do it. No one's ever done that before, have they? We haven't done it. <laughs> the All Whites haven't won the World <laughs> Cup? <laughs> what? Actually not. Jeez. No. Oh. Is that a dumb name for our we have a lot of dumb names for our national teams that are somehow derived from the All Blacks. We've got the All Whites. I think the Tall Blacks is Tall the Blank. worst one. Best one was the Badminton team. You know what they're called? The Black Cox. Black Cox. Because <laughs> Black Shuttle Cox. That's fantastic. <laughs> Legit, their name is the Black Cox. Yeah. That the... makes me so proud to be a New Zealander. There's Black Ferns. Black ferns. All whites for the soccer team, all blacks for the rugby team. Silver ferns and nipple team. Silver That's not really team. related to the all blacks in any way. No. All whites, tall blacks, black cocks. <laughs> They're my favourites. Yeah, yeah, that is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so you're picking France. I'm picking. Uh, I didn't pick, did I? You're just on the fence. I'm gonna say the all blacks. Okay. I'm gonna say the all blacks. And I'm gonna get shouted down. Fuzzy. Oh, Fozzie and Sam Kane. You can picture that. You can literally visualize. I, love, I really like Sam Kane. I so think... you, can, you, in your mind, you can visualize Sam Kane holding aloft the William Weir Bellis Trophy, and it, and it's real. Oh, okay. Look, that's a totally emotional choice. It's not based on 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 intelligence or logic or anything like that. But like, I just can't back another team. I just can't. Okay. I, look, every time the All Blacks go into a game. You think they're going to win it? I think they're going to win it. I know we talked about that last night, but even in that game, I was like, we can still win this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we yeah. won it. And I was like, yeah. I knew it. You know, like, yeah. we're a hell of a rugby nation. That's true. We're we are good. a hell of a rugby nation. We're, we've gone on, on a bit of tough times. But you know what? 2020, 23, 2020, 2023, 23. Why can I say 2023? Is a new year. We're it showing is. our legs. Yes. That's how fresh the year is. It's, remarkably muggy it's in very here. muggy you can probably see the sweat on our brows if you're listening on Spotify you probably can't see the sweat on our brows but we're sweaty uh, yeah, it's leggy like, and sweaty leggy and sweaty like uh, it'll look, I feel like a 12 year old talking to a 16 year old <laughs> in terms of our sizing but no mate I, I'm looking forward to it you feel is there something in the air in a World Cup year for you is it? oh for sure there's so many good storylines yeah there the is the fact that Gats is back in charge and England have got a new coach. Eddie's back in charge. And the All Blacks seem to be turning the corner. South Africa's still going strong. France are looking bloody good. Ireland have just been playing phenomenal. Like there's just so many good stories. And there's going to be one or two big old upsets. Exactly. There, you know? Exactly. Like, France is a very safe kind of pick, but it's yeah, a but good place to be. And there's genuinely a bunch of teams who could win just three games in a row to win a World Cup. That's so... And that's what we want. Exactly. It's a healthy place to be for the game. It should be the greatest World Cup of all time. That's what I'm picking. Go okay. On. Set the bar low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Oh, uh, Hopefully no typhoons, but anyway. Hopefully no massive storms, no apocalyptic climate change, you know, reactive storms. Yeah, which we've had enough of those, haven't we? Yeah, no pandemics, please. No, yeah, just, just a... I don't, we're, we're in New Zealand. At least we got the, the pandemic in between World Cups. That's like a yeah, saving grace. Yeah, that was a good thing. But I'm just hoping, like, we've had, like, a once in a hundred year storm again. And we, like, we, I, was it a disaster, a natural disaster, which just happened in Auckland? Yeah, it was pretty bad. I would just like a good 12 months without an international catastrophe. That would be nice. Like, there's always catastrophes, but you know, just, just, just a bit of smooth sailing from, from here on out. Is that That'd the way nice. to work? Yeah, that would be nice. But what is nice is, is being back with you, Mark. What a, Good what, to see you. What a treat. I what know. A treat. You're all, right, all sweaty and hyped about rugby. So what a yeah, good place to be. What a good place to be. Season two underway. <laughs> and we'll finish it off by giving, at the end of the year, probably end of November, by giving away a whole series of two CDs. <laughs> You're going to get every cent out of the $12 you spent on that. Isn't thing? that the greatest trophy <laughs> Of all time. Somebody designed that. There was a group of people who were like, <laughs> this is a good design. People are going to see this and think, yes, I, I want think, to buy I that. Don't, I don't think it was a great design. I don't think it's a good design. Uh, well, Somebody thought it was a good I design. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it was a group of people. I think, I think it was it's just, one guy. I think it's one guy. What else do swimmers do? Oh, it's hard to do them doing a forward <laughs> stroke. Just, just, just hyping it. Oh, goodness me. All right. Fantastic. Yes. All right. 
Take care, folks. Hey, Spotify. Ray. Yeah, oh, shit. Google Podcasts. <laughs> we don't... Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. You can listen to us on the car. You can listen we to us while you're taking that. a shit. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Exactly. It's going to end up on YouTube if you want to see a bit of leg. Yeah. So, sweaty. But imagine all the erections. Like... But this is a wall, a wallet and a phone in my <laughs> pocket. I'm not just happy I, to see you. I think you're just really happy to see me. Okay, <laughs> see you later. Thank you, folks. Bye-bye.